Good morning, pregame crew. This is Chuck Al Lori, and it is Wednesday, March 2nd, 2022, 8.20 a.m. Eastern, 6.20 a.m. Mountain Time. You have found yourself at the pregame show. Can I get an audio-visual check, please? Amara, Asia, I'm so glad you got sleep. Awesome. Hey, Jason, Mary, Andre, Joe, Topher, Night Truck, Ken, my girl, Tammy, Greg, Train Man, Dan. Good morning, everyone. And that link I shared, Carter Thomas, he does some great writing. You can tell he is a very uh, thoughtful trader, and he's really done some introspection to figure out exactly what components make a successful trader, and I really enjoy reading his article, so you may want to check that out. Okay, Chuck, my day can get started. Thank you. Hey, Bobo. How are you? Thanks, Tammy. Hey, Sven. Good morning. It's so crazy. We had a big sleep discussion and schedule discussion in the chat room. Just everyone asking what everyone else does for a routine. And I proudly said, I go to bed at 8. I wake up around 3. No, not this morning. I get up super early, like 1.15 a.m. And now I'm tired. So, like, you got it. You can't stick your foot in your mouth. It's like saying, he never misses a field goal ever. And then he misses. He never misses a foul shot. Yeah, he misses. So she missed last night. A swing and a miss. Hey, Jerome. Hey, Adam, all the way over in England. But as you can tell, I'm still super happy to be here. I have plenty of energetic, and hopefully I have some info to share with you today. And I've got some exciting news. We have not had a pregame code for a discount off Chart Guys membership in months. It has been, as my grandma would say, many, many moons. So we have a code, pregame25. 25% off your first month of membership to the Chart Guys. And you can go to chartguys.com. This is who I am. And I work with Chart Guys and we teach technical analysis. And it's a lot of fun. And give me a follow on Twitter and hit that like button. I promise to make it worth your while. You're welcome, AR. Hey, Jorge. Matt, John, Dino, good morning. Okay, I'm going to do EEM for Amira Asia. Our TCG buddy. And let me know if you have any issues with my voice dropping off. We're trying this new, new filter, like I've been telling you for a couple days. So if it's working, great. If it's not working, I can remove it. I don't want to have lots of drops in my voice. Or maybe you want drops in my voice. Okay, this is definitely... Uh, we almost got to 50%, maybe a 45% retrace. You see what I'm doing, Amira Asia? And I could even bring this down here. It's better if you go from the swing high, the true last higher high, but let's just do this and see. Okay, so we've made about a 50% bounce. So essentially, we have enough room for a higher low compared to 4501. I like the bull volume here. I don't like the bear volume yesterday. Okay, then I just start dialing in. Huh, that could be a little... Is that a falling wedge? It's not super clear. Yeah, that could be a falling wedge. And what it is, is we get these lower, these highs, lower lows, lower high, lower low, lower high. This could be a falling wedge. Interesting, Amira Asia. So here is the fly in the ointment. You would have to bounce like what what is it tigger you would have to bounce like tigger to get over the high of yesterday you're looking for a lower high on the hourly you're looking for a lower high on the four hour you're looking for a lower high possibly on the daily the lower highs for you you get a lower high you get a lower high you get a lower high so a cautious bull would look to bottom fish this 4584 get your stop close by maybe put your stop at around 4580 and give it room and see if you can get that hourly trend change good morning marcus thanks mg i appreciate it okay i'll look at oracle hey wave hey blue dog thank y'all for being here and helping us out oracle Okay, I was looking at this one earlier because someone else posted, I think in Twitter, about this one. We're holding the 50 RSI. We have a beautiful squeeze. And squeeze just means it denotes this compression. It's like getting a Coke can and shaking it up and the pressure builds inside. We've got major price compression on oral. Oracle. And we have double Ds, double daily inside bar. Resistance 76.70, support 75.02. 
actually let me map all those levels out in case you want to do a screenshot nice and tight gun to head i would lean long but only of course if nasdaq's supporting it and i would love a bottom fish of 7562 i like that name good job yep matthew yeah hit the like button why don't you silver is a potential cup and handle dan's been covering that in the room On the four hour, it's very beautiful because you're coming from this uptrend. So a cup and handle is a reversal pat pattern, meaning, excuse me, sorry, a continuation pattern, meaning that you plan this pattern typically will just resume the prior trend, in this case, up. So I was looking at another name this morning. I've liked, I like trading this in the past and it wasn't as cute on the daily. You see how this isn't ideal because we're not coming from an uptrend. We're coming from sideways consolidation. So yes, yeah, silver looks beautiful. UBS came out with some silver upgrades. Looks good. SPX 100 USD is a CFD. And ES 100, if I go to trade futures, which I do very often, I'm going to go look at ES. That's what I trade. I can't trade SPX 100 USD. I can trade SPX calls or SPX puts. And I like that it's a CFD. It saves me in taxes just like futures does for, uh, for US citizens. But I prefer ES. It, it is my understanding that SPX 100 USD follows ES. ES is where all the volume is. That is where you can see what is actually going on. And I want to look at the instrument I'm trading. And only exception to that is if I'm trading XBI, I'm not gonna look at LABD and LABU because they're three times leverage and those products tend to break. And in case you were wondering, we've been talking about RUSL for a couple weeks and guess what? It's closing down. It is closing down March 11th, it broke. So I've been telling y'all for days, I've been putting in the char chart guys uh, chat room that it was not tracking RSX. And we've seen this with XIV. We've seen it where things get broken and this extreme volatility volatility just breaks the index. And so there's, of course, more things going on with RUSL than just volatility because the assets within can, are restricted on so many exchanges now because of sanctions. So RUSL is no longer trading. I wouldn't be messing with RUSL with a 10-foot pole. So just please, please, please be careful with these names. All right, if you don't follow me on Twitter, please do so. Chart Gal Lori. I was making a joke this morning um, that Jay-Z may have 99 problems, but our Fab Four Futures have one big problem, the hourly 50 MA. And it reminded me of this shirt. I wore this to my son's football game a few years ago, and my ex-husband walked up to my now husband and said, nah, dude, you got 100 problems. You don't have 99. I thought it was funny. I miss my thyroid. This is when my thyroid worked. Bye-bye, thyroid. Okay. Y'all ready to get started? Good morning, Scott. Hey, Turtlenecks. Okay, Wave, I will, of course, answer your question, XBI. Okay, we got a double top and a double bottom for yesterday. 91.36, 91.34 resistance, support 88.40 and 88.35. So we broke the, to the upside by two pennies and we broke to the downside by five pennies. So we're definitely range bound right now. And of course, we like that for compression. And where are we relative to the range yesterday? We're approximately 40 at the 40% 40 retrace. So that's leaning more bearish than bullish. And y'all know that I love my 50 RSI. It helps give me clues. And we are hanging on to it by a fingernail. So gun to head with the way NASDAQ looks right now and SPY, I would be leaning more bearish than bullish. And only thing I'm really using there besides the ETFs wave is this 50%. If we're above the 50% retrace and we're closer to the high of yesterday, then I'm going to be more bullish. If we're below 50% of that very big range yesterday, I'm going to be more bearish. So I wish I was more scientific with what I'm telling you, but that's just how, the only way I can classify this chart as to where it is. Let's go back here. And on the daily... We have plenty of room for a higher low. Doesn't mean we'll get it, but we do have enough room for a higher low. So we'll hourly, what would it take to get to hourly oversold? 
one second let this indicator pop up 86.43 that's pretty far down there but at that point i would be very interested in xbi trying to nail that daily higher low all right y'all ready to get started in queues popping adp numbers must have been released eight so uh in queue is popping ever so slightly more importantly bullard is speaking this morning bullard is our hawk he is the most hawkish fed member out of all of our fed members and hawkish just means he favors faster interest rate hikes, higher interest rate hikes to stave off inflation. And he's speaking today and he has been, he has created major volatility in the market. And if you don't believe the news and a market correlation, that's okay. You don't have to, you, we could just say he was speaking at technical breaking points. Either way, he could create some type of undercurrent in the market today. So please be aware of that. So let's get our bearings. <laughs> Archilio. Oh, good. Good wave. All right. Welcome to the pregame show. I'm Chart Gal Lori. I'm part of Chart Guys community, and we teach technical analysis. And what I do here Monday through Friday on trading days is we have a good time. I try not to be too silly. My goal is to help you get through the trading day and navigate and get ready for it while dropping technical analysis tips and tricks along the way. I can't monitor chat. We have awesome mod members, and those mods are prestigious they're amazing traders in our chart guys chat room and they help us out over here so if they see any questions you have they'll try to answer to the best of their ability if you're interested in my chart setup which is the question we get asked the most and jason had a great idea of let's just create a pdf with all the things about my chart setup so if you're interested in my chart setup you can click on the link below in the video description and it will take you to all of the chart details and even more exciting is we have a code, 25% off the first month of membership to the chart guys. And the code, promo code is pregame25. So if you've been on the fence about chart guys, come check us out. Just hang out for 30 days, see if it helps your trading. Okay, the ADP numbers on econ calendar said 815, which is an odd time to have ADP numbers. So I'm assuming it was at 830. James Buller, 930, we talked about it. Rotation is the name of the game today. I am looking to see where money is rotating. How do I do that? Well, when I come in here, I look at the indices, crypto, commodities, and movers and shakers of the day. So I'm looking for where is money going? I wanna to go to where the puck is going. As long as the music is playing and players are left in the game, we have a party of musical chairs. When the music stops and there's no chairs left, everything is, the market could go down. So what I mean is we are constantly watching money rotate. Y'all remember the last few months, the US 10 years been going crazy and XLF had a bullish tailwind because of that, because banks like higher interest rates, higher 10 year yield encourages more interest rate hikes. When now that the US 10 year is pulling back, XLF is pulling back and money is rotating over to QQQ. And we see money leaving the travel sectors. Travel sectors got that reopening trade. They got that pop and man, did they give it all back yesterday. So today I am watching for a shift in rotation. Is QQQ gonna finally give up the ghost? And is XLF gonna get his dead cat bounce going? I don't have a lot of confidence in XLF because every time we test XLF, the more times we test that area of 3680, the weaker it gets. So you have to remember, let's go look at it. And by the way, I'm live for about 25 minutes and then I shut my platform down and then Dan will be live at 9 a.m. Is that 9 a.m.? Yeah, 9 a.m. Eastern. We have approximately three live shows per day, sometimes four when we have the technical analysis question and answer se section. So th that's how long I will run, but I typically will just keep plowing through whatever I got to do to get through all of these charts. And if I have time left at the end for any chart requests, I try to take care of that. So XLF, we keep hitting this 3680 area, one, two, three times now on the weekly. So I want you to think about what is sitting there stopping price. Order blocks, order block there, order block here. Come on. We just have these order blocks sitting there at 3680 where someone says, that's a good deal. That's a value area for me for XLF. So anytime it comes down to 3680, I am willing to buy up to 1000 shares. And then when that buying power is gone and they're like, whoa, 
it they just keep eating through my bid like all right i'm done i'm done buying i'll wait for 36 dollars, and they'll put their next order of 1000 down at 36 dollars. so we are chewing away at these order blocks underneath us it is very important for me and maybe just the way my brain works for me to visualize what is happening behind the scenes to cause these candles to pause and then what makes those candles break through we are just chewing away at this supply below we have a little bit of a broadening formation forming which this i'm going to leave it there because this candle hasn't closed so we'll see if this trend line holds but the more times we test this 3680 the more times or that increases the likelihood that we could break through but i'm i'm watching to see can xlf step up and get a bounce going while nq consolidates i am bearish on nq today because of this potential four hour head and shoulders and i would like bull trades i i'm looking for daily higher low dip buys but i would like those closer to hourly oversold and you can let's see if i can sort this by newest first so i want you to look up here i set an alert for ccg ccj hourly oversold mara hourly oversold exk 10 minute oversold trying to get that back first back burner tan hourly oversold tesla hourly oversold qqq hourly oversold spy oversold i set all of these this morning so i like to set alerts they do the fishing for me while I, I don't have to look at the charts it just tells me then i can go once the alert goes off i can go look at that chart and say hmm am i still interested in this setup now that i have more data i can see where the market is so don't forget to use your alerts that's this morning's theme by the way so i am interested in bull plays but i want it closer to hourly oversold and we're just not there we have potential two three even four hour uh nq head and shoulders right shoulder at the time that i typed this it was poorly developed let's go look at it so on the hourly we had this broadening formation very crystal crystal clear and i posted that in the futures chat room at 3:54 a.m so almost three hours ago three hours yeah almost three hours ago it was pausing right here at the hourly 50 ma and we had this hourly broadening formation now i'm going to clear everything off and yesterday we were watching this rising wedge and man did that come to fruition so i'm going to clear this all off then i'm going to go to the four hour and i want to show you the next thing i'm looking at on a higher time frame we've got these head and shoulders on lots of names this is poorly developed and poorly developed actually just means even more bearish it can't even get a nice rounded arc going with a little dead cat bounce so the hourly 50 ma is containing price on let's look at it yes nq rty and ym and some of you have written to me and said you added this to your toolkit this hourly 50 ma and you really enjoy it and if you don't that's fine too i mean just do you boo es four hour potential head and shoulders again that's a terrible drawing but this right side is not it's very poorly developed let's look at it on six hour and see if it's a bear flag actually um probably. yeah possible 12 hour inside bars right now so let me give you key levels on es resistance is 4343 4, support 4278 nasdaq resistance is 14145 and support 13911 rty resistance 2028 support 1991 ym resistance 33548 33121 now we do have a little bit of squeeze here we've lost the 50 rsi we're losing these hourly emas so you see how flat price is compared to at least nasdaq was pushing up into that hourly 50 ma trying to jump over it dow's not even near it it's much flatter so i want you to remember that in a second when we talk about john deere I, that's why i'm picking on john deere is because dow is a little bit weaker than most okay so why in the bear the bear's ointment today is vix could be an hourly let me show you why go to my notes when i can just show you right here on the two hour or the hourly it could be a bear flag and we're looking for a lower high compared to 3441 if we set that lower high and get another lower low that would be a boon for the market a little push up all right hourly we talked about that talked about that 
talked about that. If QQ takes a rest, QQQ takes a rest today, XLF must get off the bench and enter the race. No, no if ands, buts about it. If the money stops rotating from XLF to QQQ to this, to that, to this, to that, and they just say, okay, we're done. I'm going to sit this one out and the music stops, we could have a very rapid decline. So we don't want to see that XLF must get off the bench if QQQ is going to take a rest today. I put this in here twice. Why did I do that? But we have a code, 25% off first month of membership for the chart, guys, using pregame 25. And this is your first time joining us. We haven't had a code in months. So I don't sell. That's not my job here for the pregame show. I think the content sells itself and the community and the greatness of our moderators. You could just see the high quality. It sells itself. So you won't get this every time. Matter of fact, you may not see this for a while. So I would take advantage of it if I were you. All right, setting alerts is your absolute friend. And I know my analogies are sometimes so wonky, but y'all just stay with me, okay? Go set those alerts, mark up your charts. Yesterday's high and low at a minimum. And I said that yesterday and I was getting so many questions. Really, that's important? Super important. If you can get over yesterday's high, that shows relative strength. And then you start comparing it to other things. Is the market getting over yesterday's high? No, okay, well your name's a relative outperformer. If your name breaks the low of yesterday and SPY does it, now you have a relative underperformer. Mark those charts up. It doesn't have to be graffiti, but mark them up and set alerts. So when I told y'all I like Survivor shows, I love it. Alone is one of my favorite shows where they put these 10 people out in these remote areas and they give them like one or two things, like a fur and a like knife, and whoever stays out there the longest without tapping out, they win like $100,000. I love the show. And I like yell at the TV because they'll go out there fishing and they'll just sit there with the fish, their makeshift fishing pole and catch one fish a day. Or they'll go out there and try to like get a, what do you call that, a slingshot and kill a rabbit. And I'm like, go make snares. Go put, put out 50 snares. Work smarter, not harder. That's what setting alerts is. Let those alerts do the work for you while you're sitting back eating bonbons. Yesterday, I posted in the room, VRNOF. It is approaching monthly support. Is it because I was looking at VRNOF? Actually, you TCG members can testify. I was on live when that alert popped up. Oh, that was a nice little pop. I posted in the room, we hit 996. And we were right here by 988. So I had my alert set, I believe, for $10. And I said, tell me when VRNOF is approaching this monthly and weekly support. And wow, that was a nice bounce. And I just posted it in the room. I didn't take the trade. I hope someone else took it. But it is doing all the fishing and hunting for me so I can chill and do what I like to do, which is help our room. All right. And another thing. We have so many members that have used this analogy lately. Well, not so many, two in particular, that some days they feel like they're sitting at an all-you-can-eat buffet and they're starving to death. Why? Because they're not setting their snares. Go set your alerts. If you're very familiar, excuse me, with CGC, go set alerts on CGC for resistance, for support. Doesn't mean you have to take the trade, but at least you know when we're reaching critical areas and zones. Okay, so here's the cheat sheet for Queen of the Mountain setups. If you're a TCG member, we had member King. He was taking notes and posting all the notes from the pregame in our general chat, and you had access to those almost on the daily. Well, he is not, he can't take notes right now for some personal reasons, so I'll be sure to post all of these in the chat when I'm done. So CCL, we talked about travel names, getting the wallop yesterday, yesterday and Boy, did that work out beautifully. So CCL, I'm looking for a top fish over here. Oh, wait, whoa, 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 sorry. I need to do crypto. Y'all will freak out if I don't do crypto. Those are the listeners that get the most freaked out if I skip a name. Okay, we have support at 42850 and then 40,350. Don't forget, prior resistances can serve as support. If that is an area where price went skirt, skirt, and stopped in its tracks, it can be an area where it stops in its tracks to the downside. And as Dan said, as long as these four-hour EMAs are holding support, as long as they're holding support, bulls are in charge of this chart, Ethereum. Ethereum support, I think I drew these from the hourly, and we busted that one. 
Support 2914902897. Resistance 3029-3045. Gold. I don't like gold here. Gold has been super strong, but I'm looking for just a breather. I'm not looking for it to completely roll over. I'm just looking for it to take a breather compared to 1951, 1952, your support 1916, 1913. Oil. Well, look at that. Howdy doody. That is a big move in oil overnight. Potential broadening formation, actually. Support 107.63, resistance high of this move, 112.51. If you go out to the monthly, we are in an area of congestion now. But news trumps all resistance and RSI issues. So as long as this Russia conflict continues and there's fear of decreased oil supply, and OPEC met today and they agreed to whatever they're going to do to increase output to decrease price. I don't know what all that means. I didn't look at all the specifics, but we'll see if it can pause in this area of congestion. Yep, I gave you those levels. Nat gas, same thing, war related. Look at this hourly hold of EMAs. It is so important to zoom out to higher time frames, and I call my EMAs my trade keepers. As long as I have my EMAs below me, I can stay in long on whatever time frame I'm looking at on the larger scale of things. So on the hourly, you have resistance of 4768, then way up here at 4893. You have support at 4678 and 4628. All right, Apple. Apple was a tough one for me today. We're whole, we are just now breaking that 50 RSI. We have a huge squeeze. I'm expecting volatility today from Apple and for it to break this inside bar. If it doesn't, if it doesn't, excuse me, yesterday wasn't an inside bar. But instead of staying within yesterday's range, I'm looking for a definitive break. And right now I'm leaning toward the downside, shorting 165. You have support 162.56, 161.97. And the reason I'm looking for volatility is a squeeze and how long we've stayed inside this range. Look at that anaconda, really squeezing price. Sorry, nose itch. So Apple, I'm looking to the short side, CCL. CCL was just a beautiful short yesterday, and I tell y'all often to zoom into the 15 minute to get your resistances. We have a resistance here at 1940, one here at 1941. So on any pop on CCL, we're only looking for hourly lower highs. Why have I been picking on cruises, airlines? Because of oil. And why did we trade JKS Monday Solar? Because of that Reggie buyout, which is a solar name by Chevron, and Oil price is going through the roof. We have money leaving to alternative fuels and energy sources. And Dan went over tan yesterday, and I've been pounding the table on that one. Look at this. I think AM, you got JKS, right? Look at this move. This is what day we had it. This was this was Monday, yeah. Bottom fishing, 4201. You took that trade. A little 33% bounce, no big deal. CF. So CF is in the fertilizer space, and there I have read a, a statistic, but we know what statistics can be. It's not always the truth, but that 90% of fertilizer, whatever, is produced in Ukraine, and that's why the fertilizer names have been going ballistic, NTR, huge, MOS. I haven't looked at SMG. Yeah, that's not going as much. So what I was looking at this morning is CF, huge move because of the war, but look at this big pullback here. That favors a lower high compared to 84.70. And on my notes, I put, oh, I didn't put caution. Shoot, sad. Shame on me. Caution on this, any war-related name like oil, like fertilizer names, you uh, Lockheed Martin, Raytheon, Northrop, Y'all have to, LHX, all of those war-related names, Powell, the gun, ammunition names, Smith & Wesson, SWBI. You have to be careful in shorting. And the other group that we were been talking about the last week is cybersecurity, like Palo Alto Network, PANW, CrowdStrike. And I do think we're reaching temporary tops and hungry, hungry bull hippos are going to want to buy the dip. But I think a top fish is in order on CF against 8470. And if you're wrong, be wrong fast. Deer. Okay. All right. So, dear, I like a top. I'm sorry. When I try to read the room, it's like as soon as I start reading the chat room, I get lost over here on where I am. 
So John Deere, let me zoom out. Let me show you why I'm looking at it. On my scan today, I saw we have a daily inside bar. We're running into the eight EMA and we have a double top at 36239, 36187. So that's within 13, 52 cents of, what is that, Monday's high. So we have a double top in this area. We're up here testing it right now. So bull break, this, this idea is over, but I like a top fish of 362.39 on deer. Same thing with J and J. I did my scan. I found these double D's. We are below the 50 RSI. And I recognize that I am talking out of both sides of my mouth on two charts are really sticking out to me this morning when I'd go back and look at what I, my notes. And I'm like, did I do that right? Look at J and J and then look at Roblox. Actually, Roblox and Netflix look a lot alike, but yet I have two different stances on them. So I'll go, up, go over why. So going back to Johnson & Johnson, we're below the 50 RSI, double daily inside bars, resistance 164.75. We're already through that 165.18. So Johnson & Johnson, I like it bullish. NCLH, same trade as CCL. It's a cruise name. I like a top fish at pre-market high or 1905 area. Let's go look at it. 1905 here and pre-market is 1916. Netflix. Netflix has a daily inside bar. We're fighting over that eight EMA. On the weekly, I just like that this weekly high or low could be set because we broke through the high of that candle this week already. So that makes me a little more bullish Netflix. And then on Roblox, you see how we haven't done that? It's, it, well, I guess we did break through the high of last week, but this could be a bear flag on the weekly. This could be a bear flag on the daily. So we have daily inside bars on Netflix and Roblox, but I'm leaning more bearish on Roblox. Top fishing, 51.71 and Netflix. Top fishing pre-market high or 39.108 or 39.149. And finally, XLF, we talked about that one, about 3680 being so, oh so important. If we keep testing, testing it, we could fall right through the bottom. You did, Mary? Congratulations. Oh, I love Naked and Afraid. Because it's like the exact opposite of anything that I would ever do. Okay, Nat, we top fish 123.36, 123.12. That is a, a double top, sorry, double top. Support 116.79, 116 116.19. Yep, there is, Steven. Huh. This is oil. Remember, I said oil's in a congestion area, but as long as it's holding hourly EMAs, I am bullish oil. And we have support here at 2945, 2917, resistance 2983, and 3012. One more name. Auto Nation. Where did I see this? Oh, this was at the daily inside bar scan. That's where I saw it this morning. So we double topped at 114.82, 115.13. We're above the daily 50 EMA. Much healthier than most names. 30 minutes, super tight. Support 112.32, 111.65. All right. Thanks for joining me. Please hit the like button before you leave on your way out. Bring a friend tomorrow. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the notify button. And come check us out at chartguys.com. And you can use promo code PREGAME25 for 25% off your first month of membership. And most importantly, use stop losses. Is that all I had to say today? I think that's it. All right. Bye, y'all.